For the most part, modern wristwatches generally all look quite similar. There's some sort of circular or maybe even a rectangular case with a dial that has hands and tells the time. Yeah, there's different case materials and additional complications, but still, at first glance, you can easily recognize that it's a wristwatch. However, there's an independent brand called Orwork from the twisted minds of designer Martin Fry and master watchmaker Felix Baumgartner that creates watches, actually hot horology timepieces, that draw inspiration from things as exotic as vintage Bugattis to things as random as a chicken grill in the Middle Eastern country of Oman that look almost nothing like regular old wristwatches. Yes, I said a chicken grill. So what are these things? And are they in any way practical to wear? The name Orwer comes from the word Or, which is a town in ancient Mesopotamia where the modern basic concepts of measuring time were molded. And Work, W-E-R-K, which is German for to work or create. The brand was founded in 1997 and started out with some fairly unique pieces, but in 2005, a pivotal moment occurred from a design perspective. See, that's when Orwork partnered with Harry Winston, which was then ran by a young Max Booser, who we all know from MBNF, on the Opus 5. If you're not familiar with the Opus series, it was basically Harry Winston, or Max specifically, collaborating with extremely talented independent watchmakers to make horological works of art. For example, Francois Paul Jorn, yes, the F.P. Jorn mastermind himself, was the partner for the original Opus 1. The Opus 5 was unique in that it was a flippin' wild watch that we really hadn't seen before. It had an odd satellite hour display and a retrograde minute hand all in a case that was just thick enough to give the dial a level of three-dimensionality that was really unique and groundbreaking for the time. It really helped to put Orwork designs on the map and propel the watch industry into a new realm of hot horology designs, and it was the last Harry Winston opus that Max Booser worked on before leaving to create his very own watch brand, MBNF, that stands for Max Booser and Friends, which was heavily inspired by his time working with independent watchmakers, aka Friends, on the opus series. This was a big deal and a real tipping point for both Orwork and Max. All right, let's fast forward to the watch I actually got to spend some time with and what I think is now the near pinnacle of their out there styling, the Orwork UR112 Aggregate Fade to Black. It's a freaking wild watch. A watch is really an understatement here. It's actually a high-end, DLC-coated, titanium and steel, time-telling beast of a machine on your wrist. There are zero traditional hands on this watch. Everything is digital. You get a digital jumping hours, digital minutes, and even digital seconds once you pop the hood. I said hood because the UR112 was inspired by a rare Bugatti Atlantic from fashion designer Ralph Lauren's car collection. I can kind of see that in that it's a blacked out case just like the car, and it's sort of shaped like a two. Another rather interesting thing that Martin and Felix found inspiration from was during a trip to Oman. The story is they were near the seaside of the capital city, Muscat, looking out into the old harbor, sitting on colorful plastic chairs, waiting for their locally prepared grilled chicken dish to be served. As they waited, they looked puzzled at the machine in front of them spinning their chicken to tender perfection. This simple piece of machinery, a chicken grill, triggered a discussion between the two crazy men, and I mean that in the most positive way, and that's how this rotating digital hour and minute hand came to be. This just goes to show you never know when or where inspiration might come your way. Just be ready when it does and embrace it, yes, even if it's from something as mundane as a chicken grill. Inspiration aside, let's talk specs. The watch is surprisingly 30 meters water resistant. It's 42 millimeters wide, 52 millimeters tall, and 16 millimeters thick. It's not small and it's not massive either, but does it matter? This isn't a traditional watch. It's a machined work of art on your wrist, and if you view it as such, then this thing is pretty cool, size be damned. It felt right at home on my wrist once I understood that. Look. Like my buddy Mark Kozaris said in his introduction article to this piece, this isn't really someone's first watch, or anyone's watch, because it'll set you back around a quarter of a million dollars, and there's only 25 total. It's for the person that's, of course, rich, 
already has a robust collection and is ready for something that's just out there and different from a design standpoint compared to anything else out there on the market. Oh yeah, how do you tell the time? It's not really that hard. In fact, it's easier for me to tell the time on the UR112 than a traditional watch with a normal dial and hands because it's shown digitally. My brain computes this just a little bit faster. So inside these sapphire tubes, there's a jumping hours display on the left and a minutes display on the right that's shown in five minute increments. The indices or hash marks on the right side indicate how many minutes you should add to the big number on current display. What the watch does behind the scenes in order to show this to you is complex, but reading the actual time is again, really simple. What's powering this little wonder is Orwerk's in-house caliber UR13.01, which is an automatic movement that beats at four hertz and has 48 hours of power. One neat thing for all you car enthusiasts is that a titanium transmission shaft, that's what Orwerk is calling it, is right smack in the middle of the movement that couples with the display module. It's also one of the longest parts in modern watchmaking. It drives those hours and minutes prisms. It's not a watch with many complications, but it's very cool nonetheless. Look, this or work is not for everyone, and for me, that's a great thing. I'm no designer, but a lot of designs in general, not just watches, all tend to sort of look alike. In order to stand out, you have to take some risks or just get inspiration from things other than the industry standard, or do whatever the hell you want. That's not easy in the watch industry, especially if the goal is to appeal to many folks and sell many units. I don't think Orwork designs are wild just for the sake of it. They're fun design ideas from Martin and Felix that express whatever they want it to express. They're not trying to make a perfectly sized case or follow any of the common trends you're seeing nowadays. Because of this, we've all taken note and many people dig their stuff, even brands. I definitely do. Now, let me borrow a quarter of a million dollars so I can get one.